Welcome to Framework Fortune. I'm your host, Ben, and welcome back to all you great members of the Framework Fortune community. If you're new to the channel and you are surprised by this drop in the stock market in the NASDAQ or the crypto markets, be sure to subscribe as we try to cover all of this craziness across all markets. And in this video, I'm going to explain why you have to look at all the markets when we're talking about this much value being moved around so this of course is a head and shoulders pattern this is your head this is your shoulder this is your other shoulder this is on the nasdaq futures and we have just continued down making the arm of this pattern now we finally did hit a little area of some support every time we hold somewhere we have a little bounce back up and get rejected off of this downtrend and this downtrend has been confirmed multiple times this being the third time now if it cannot rebound back up to this trend line again and we see the Nasdaq crack below these previous lows which this low here is 11.7. We're going to see it come down to 11.5. On the SPY, that would be around 3.85. 11.5 doesn't seem that far and like that big a deal until you scroll back on the entire chart. And the 11.5 area is actually the last little area of congestion before we could fall all the way back down to previous highs this is going to be the next support area 10,000 on the NQ if that 11.5 does not hold and the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell they've announced that they're offloading assets so they're selling the thing about all of this is that this market has been propped up and we know this because they've told us after 2000, the dot-com crash, they had to start a little bit of QE. Fast forward up to 2008, where we had the housing crash, or as I call it, the housing dip, because the distance on this is not that far comparatively to what we have seen in the past. And all I do to simply measure this is just take a line, put it at the top of the highs of the beginning of the crash, bring it down to the bottom. Do the same thing with a housing dip. Started about right there. We'll leave that line there. After the 2008 housing crash, it really showed weakness in the U.S. economic policies. And to keep the market from crashing any harder, all the markets, they started printing more money, more QE. And it's not actually printing money, it's just clicking a button. Just like that. That would have been a dollar bill. That is why we have been on a massive bull run in the markets. And when you look at it pulled back like this, you can see that even the 2020 COVID dip is barely a blip. And that's why I call that a dip and not a crash on this chart. This is less than 15 years that this has happened. And if you compare the NASDAQ to the United States Central Bank balance sheet, you can see it started spiking in 2008, right around the same time that they started doing the QE, because the QE also involves buying assets. As the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has went up, which is now looks like it's around 8.9 trillion, so as they start tapering, which means they're going to reduce this balance sheet, what do you think is going to start happening? They've just barely started reducing the balance sheet and look at the pullback. We pull up the consumer price index, which is a measure of inflation. You can see that it has been going up since 2008 as well. So this is the amount of US dollars in circulation. Just by natural laws of supply and demand, more supply, if there's not enough demand to keep up with it, means that the value is going to drop. A lot of people consider the US dollar as money. I consider it only as currency. There's a difference and we'll get into that in just a second. So this is the last chart we're gonna compare against NASDAQ for the moment. 
and then we're going to get into some of the other concepts before I put it all together with a nice bow on top. The United States inflation rate would be an uptrend like this. That is the same uptrend as the U.S. stock market. So earlier I mentioned the difference between money and currency. And this is a very important thing to disconnect in your brain if you think they are the same thing. The U.S. dollar does not have any actual value, right? It's just a piece of paper. Nobody just wants U.S. dollars. Like, what is a pile of U.S. dollars in your floor going to do? It's not going to do anything except for just take up space. Now, when you go to buy something, then you can take your pile of paper and, yes, go and get a whole bunch of things. But you did not want the pile of paper that was sitting there. You wanted the whole bunch of different things. Here we have just a basic layout of what the U.S. Federal Reserve, our politicians, most of the country thinks the markets look like. And this is true was true but becoming not true anymore and i'll explain why in a second but we have the u.s stock market the nasdaq nyse all of that up here the u.s dollar world reserve currency that's why i have it as the biggest circle it is a fiat currency again it's just paper fiat means that there's nothing really backing it there's no real value other than the government's word. U.S. dollar index is a measure of the value of U.S. dollar relative to a basket of foreign currencies. And the index was established by the U.S. Federal Reserve in 1973. It is now maintained by ICE Data Indices, a subsidiary of Intercontinental Exchange. Do some research into that. You'll probably find some interesting stuff there. The six currencies included are often referred to as America's most significant trading partners. But the index has only been updated once in 1999 when the euro replaced the German mark, the French franc, Italian lira, Dutch, Gilder, Belgian franc. Consequently, the index does not accurately reflect present U.S. day trade so what is intercontinental exchange doing what have they been doing with this index for the last 20 something years why have they not updated it so back to the board here if you have a job or if you're an entrepreneur whatever you do you're trading your time and your effort you're swapping it for us dollar so if you want to buy stocks you would be swapping your us dollar for whatever stocks or funds you purchase over here you're not getting the u.s dollar just to hold right if you're going to go buy food groceries whatever else then your money is going to go to commodities because commodities are corn rice beans oil all types of different things that we use on an everyday basis we're going to ignore the little guy crypto for now we know where your value is coming from over here, how you're transferring it into US dollar and then transferring it into the things that you actually want. Then where does that US dollar currency go after you transferred it into one of these markets from investing and trading or buying things that you need? Well, that US dollar that went here, the money from the food, and all of that would either go back to the stock market to the companies producing the food or the private sector either one or it would go back into US dollar right so then if your US dollar is going into the stock market well where did your US dollar go after that well it either goes into other stocks which it could continue a loop until it comes back out of the stock market and back into the US dollar. Some of the commodities won't go to the US stock market. Any that are foreign that you're purchasing would then go to the foreign markets, right? But then to do global trade for the foreign markets and the foreign currencies, 
they have to trade in US dollars. So it goes back into the currency. And then of course the cycle continues and you get another paycheck. Now we can get really super complicated and go into how foreign markets can be invested into the stock market or into metals and commodities all of that but we're going to keep it as simple as possible because we don't need that many details for the cupcake i'm baking here but because the u.s dollar has been the world reserve currency everything in the u.s stock market is priced in u.s dollar all the metals and commodities if you're from the united states or trying to buy them from the united states or anybody who mainly trades in US dollar which is a lot of the world or has been but as you see as the chart is coming together the US dollar isn't actually anything that anybody wants it is just a mechanism to transfer value around to other items products or markets the US dollar did not start out big like this right it started out a lot smaller of course, the stock market would be relevant to that too. As the currency supply, as we saw on the charts, has been expanding, the inflation has been expanding, the US dollar has been expanding because this cycle that the Federal Reserve set up once they took the US dollar off of the gold standard and made it a fiat currency is how they were able to make the US dollar turn as big as it is because that cycle that they set up just continues and continues and continues until it doesn't. As these foreign markets over here have started to figure out that the products that we've been sending them US dollar for, they've started realizing that they are in this cycle and they're never going to get back the money that is owed from the US government because it is virtually impossible when this whole cycle is set up like this. As they're realizing that, they're gonna stop trading in US dollar because it keeps those markets right where they are and the US dollar and the US economy continuing to grow. So once they start doing that, which we've already been seeing with the growth of many countries, Indonesia has seen great growth during the pandemic and everything. As these markets start to grow, then the US dollar will start to shrink, right? Because you no longer have this inflow. So, of course, the U.S. dollar can still go to metals and commodities and come right back in or go into stocks and come right back in. But you're going to have the big daddy shrinking while this one is growing. And as this one shrinks because the entire U.S. stock market is priced in the U.S. dollar, the stock market will shrink along with the US dollar because those foreign markets will also not be transferring value into the stock market either. Now add in taxes that the US government gets. You get taxed on your returns here. I'm use red T's for the tax so you get taxed on that line and your paycheck gets taxed right so when the US currency is coming back to you they take some of it. If you sell a metals or commodity investment when you try to send that back to US dollar or foreign currency, that's going to get taxed. If you are sending foreign currencies or products being sent overseas, that's going to get taxed. Every single path of this cycle is a place where the US government is getting extra US dollar that then goes back into the US dollar. <laughs> so that also led to the continued expansion and growth of the US dollar. So I'm gonna leave those red T's on there to remember the taxes, and I'm probably missing some in some spots. And like I said, there's a whole lot more detail that we could get into on this, and there would be other places in all those details where taxes would be coming out of. But now we gotta talk about the little guy, right? The little guy's been being ignored over here. You take your time and effort, your value, put it in the US dollar, and then put it into cryptos, right? We've seen that growth of cryptos since they came out with starting with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin may be down right now, but it's still up 
thirty thousand dollars when it was a hundred dollars uh, around ten years ago. The early ideas of crypto have always been to hodl. There's not really been any of that value coming back into U.S. dollars. If nobody's selling it, they have to sell it for U.S. dollars, and they're not selling, then it's not coming back in to this cycle. Instead, it's sucking the U.S. dollar out of this cycle. Since we see populations of other countries buying cryptos, we have that going to crypto as well. A lot of them have been holding, right? So that caused the crypto market to expand <laughs> pretty rapidly. Now, before the safe haven has always been the metals and commodities market during a crash, but with the newer generations and some of the older generation believing that crypto is actually a better hedge or a new hedge or whatever, this market here would start to shrink because the buyers taking their USD and swapping it into metals and commodities, you know, they'd be swapping it into crypto. So it would start to shrink this market as well and the stock market. So now that we have this variable of crypto thrown in, you can see where it's starting to get messy. You can see where the whole cycle that we've been in for a long time, the U.S. dollar cycle, the fiat cycle, is starting to have weaknesses. And because the Federal Reserve has pushed the limits with adding to this currency supply, right? We're in those big spikes. So if I'm looking at this right now in real time where we're at, I would say the stock market is up here with the U.S. dollar pretty big. Altogether, all the foreign markets, you're looking pretty big there. Cryptos at the moment just crashed. Now, the U.S. dollar and the U.S. stock market and foreign markets and foreign currencies, for the most part, besides the digital yuan, have at least 50 years of history to go off of. Cryptos is a whole new sector we have around 20 years to go off of but it being new means there's going to be a whole lot of expansion so we know for sure regardless whether it be bitcoin ethereum whatever the coins tokens that are the big boys in the end it is all about the actual technology behind the cryptos where the growth is right it's not making a currency out of nothing like the US dollar there's actual technology behind crypto so that is a value that backs the currency whatever the blockchain is that cryptocurrency has actual value behind it it doesn't need all of this cycle to continue to expand just like metals and commodities don't actually need a US dollar to expand as more people are born more people are going to eat things more food <laughs> so it doesn't need the US dollar the US stock market needs the US dollar without the US dollar then what is the US stock market the companies in the US stock market don't need the US dollar either they're just forced to go through it so because again those taxes and to continue this big cycle however if they decided to which we have seen some companies do hint hint wink wink elon musk and tesla have took their u.s dollar and went to cryptos further expanding that market we have all these markets that previously were feeding into the u.s dollar and into the u.s stock market that are now getting disrupted so the u.s stock market according to this should follow the u.s dollar index from 2008 to now does look like it's been similar but we got to scale back on this u.s dollar index and take a look at the bigger picture so when we scroll out and we look at the whole entire chart of the u.s dollar index back to 1968 if you want to go back even that far the US dollar has been in a downtrend whereas the stock market and all of that 
have been on that artificial uptrend. So the actual value that you've been trading your time and effort for that's supposed to be represented by the U.S. dollar and remember, they haven't updated this in 20 years. The start of this uptrend from the 2008 crash, people have thought that the dollar has been strengthening because that's what the Federal Reserve has been telling and showing. But in reality, over this period of time, the last 40 years, it has been decreasing in the value that it represents. Going back to the fiat currency of the U.S. dollar being backed by the government's word, they have been purposely and accurately showing the actual value that the dollar currency is supposed to represent. And they've been lying to all these markets, including everybody in the stock market. When everybody figures that out, we're going to see... A whole lot of supply that has been printed with no more demand lines to it. So with that much supply and no demand, our U.S. dollar here, is value that it represents, shrinks. Eventually, as it becomes smaller and smaller, of course, the U.S. stock market will become smaller and smaller because it will be crashing right if the you if the whole entire stock market is priced in this to represent the value of these companies and this crashes well then so does this now all of these lines are in directions are going to change right because this is no longer the big kahuna in the middle if this trend continues that we're on and that would then leave cryptos foreign markets and foreign currencies and metal commodities left because these are all backed by value in some way where all of this has been a lie. <laughs> so where is the value that used to be going through this cycle going to go? These three markets are going to see some type of value growth, and they have been. And the only thing that could save it, maybe, at this point, is if the U.S. dollar was backed, actual value behind it, instead of just the U.S. government's word, by either crypto commodities or some type of foreign currency or foreign market that has actual value behind it. And not all foreign currencies have value behind them. Most of them are fiat currencies and are as bad as the U.S. dollar with their setup. They're just way younger in that cycle. So in reality, we know that there's not really going to be anything from there to back the U.S. dollar. It'd have to be the U.S. government or Federal Reserve to say, listen, we got to back the U.S. dollar with either some type of metal com metals, commodities, or a cryptocurrency and not a stable coin right because you back the u.s dollar with a stable coin that's pegged to the u.s dollar it's not really backed it's just both of them <laughs> it's redundant so you'd have to back it with actual crypto that has blockchain value coin utility all of that and a lot of demand so since all the demand from over here from this big cycle is going to go out and it can only go to these other places unless that miracle happens for the U.S. dollar, which ones are going to see the most expansion? I'm leaning towards cryptos because it is the newest market and it did just crash 80% from the high of this year. Could it crash more? Absolutely, all of them could. But this recent crash was due to an attack on UST and Luna, which if you haven't seen that video, you should watch because it correlates directly with everything I've said in this video of who the culprit is, the Federal Reserve of that attack, and this backs that even further. So is there any chance for a major rebound not likely as the dollar's running into this downtrend it has started to come back down and we compare the nasdaq here in the short term we can start to see that same peak that the nasdaq just had the dollar seems to be having almost the exact same candle as here 
which on the NASDAQ was followed by this latest dip. So when the U.S. dollar index and the NASDAQ are starting to align, then we're going to start seeing that truth of the cycle collapsing. So on the monthly chart, the NASDAQ still could try to hold 12,000. This support area doesn't look very likely. Looks like we are going to go down to that 11.5. And as you see, the uptrend is right around that 10. If that 10 cracks, that would be the final confirmation that we are going to see the U.S. dollar and the U.S. stock market crash. But remember, as the NASDAQ is dropping, the values coming out of there, it has to go back into the U.S. dollar, causing false strength like this bounce we've seen over the past year on the short term. So that is why I've been a perma bear for a while on the stock market and the U.S. dollar and been bullish on metals and cryptos, and I'm still bullish on metals and commodities and cryptos. <laughs> because we have not seen any changing of that trend of this whole cycle collapsing. Even though we've been downtrending, there are going to be green days in the market. There's going to be bounces. But the next couple of weeks, we have really got to hold these support areas on the NASDAQ, or it is going to get extremely, extremely ugly. So hopefully that clarifies some things and doesn't confuse you, but if you are confused even more or a little bit less, let me know in the comments. I'll try to clear it up for you however I can and also go check out frameworkfortune.com. Sign up for free. There's no paywalls and come join the Discord and you can catch me as, as well as H, H Trader and other traders in the Framework Fortune community going over analysis and going over charts just like this almost every day. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Till next time.